So we really have to start, I think, with the NWSL investigation news. Um, we saw corrective actions and sanctions released and announced by the league in light of the joint team investigations of full release in December. And we had wondered, uh, what's that next step, right? What is that? Uh, what is that official final turning of the page look like for the league as they prepare uh, to really kick off 2023, right? To really take that first step into this next era, this new year. And we saw a lot of things um, drop. You know, lists a long list essentially of a conse of consequences. Um, you know, by the league yeah. uh, in terms of uh, different levels and, and areas. So we saw um, uh, across the board a wide range of, of permanent bans, um, conditional bans, um, conditional um, f potential future employment, um, fines, like very, very large first of their kind types of fines um, for, for, for clubs. So we can just maybe sort of run down um, these list of things uh, for, for folks to sort of um, get caught up. Coaches who are permanently banned, who will no longer um, ever set foot in, in NWSL in any capacity. Uh, former head coaches, Paul Riley, uh, Christy Holly, Rory Dames, and Richie Burke. Uh, those four uh, people issued permanent bans and will no longer... Um, have a place in NWSL. There was also yeah. bans uh, for coaches and executives as well, but these are conditional. Uh, they, they, there's a deadline on them um, through 2025. Um, so it was interesting to sort of see to see that level um, for this one. We saw listed here Craig Harrington, a former uh, Red Stars assistant and former Utah Royals head coach, but also Elise LeHue, uh, a former Chicago Red Stars and then Gotham FC uh, general manager, and then ultimately uh, also had held the role of vice president uh, for some time with uh, with Gotham FC as well. So the league here um, in issuing this sanction saying that, you know, future employment um, is at the discretion of the commissioner, uh, but that those two have to participate um, in training amongst other things. But the interesting component for this, for me, Lisa, and, and as we get into some of these um, conditional things, um, there's also an admittance of wrongdoing within yeah. within some of these categories, which for me, I thought was a very interesting component within this, because I think for some to sort of take a look at that, um, that could have a perception or be perceived as, uh, you know, basically like an admission of, of guilt in, in some capacity. So to sort of see um, some of these names listed in the sanctions with that really stood out for me. Yeah. I, I think that's a really good point to bring up because it was almost like three different levels of these sanctions. The first one being that um, these coaches are banned completely, right? As you mentioned, Riley, Holly, Dames and Burke banned completely and, and entirely. And then the two executives uh, and coaches that are just uh, like banned until 2025 and then other coaches on conditional future employment, meaning that they do have to uh, kind of run through a checklist List, a series of things and and one of those being that they have to acknowledge their wrongdoing and accept their personal responsibility for the inappropriate conduct participating um, then also after they do that participating in training and demonstrating that they have a sincere commitment to correcting their behavior which is a quote from the league per their statement um, and I thought that part was really interesting it's not just like you have to pay this money you have to wait a couple years then you can come back into this league there's almost these like moral checkpoints that uh, the league is making these executives do to to in order to work back in this league or to work back with a club. Um, and I like that, frankly. It's not just like check a box, do a training class and, and uh, check out of it because, I mean, in the case of specifically Richie Burke, formerly with Washington spirit, he didn't admit to anything that he did, right? Like I, I, it was more of those top level coaches, but not saying like, yes, like I did this and instead saying, I didn't know there was Jewish people on the team. And, and so I could make those comments and like, that's just completely absurd and crazy, crazy. So the fact that there are these explicit conditions that need to be met um, in writing for all to see is, 
important because as the third round of sanctions uh, were listed in this document, um, basically saying that there were coaches on these conditional future employment, some of them being Freed Ben Sidi, he was formerly the head coach at OL Reign, James Clarkson, formerly head coach at Houston Dash, Vera Paul, formerly head coach at Houston Dash before Clarkson. Amanda Cromwell, formerly head coach at Orlando Pride. Sam Green, that was uh, Cromwell's assistant at Orlando Pride. And then Eileen Reese, who was the goalkeeper coach at Orlando Pride. So those people as well must acknowledge their wrongdoing, accept their personal responsibility for the inappropriate conduct, participate in the training, all in order to uh, – work again in the league and with the league. Um, and I think that that's like a great little point in all of this, that they have to go through the training. They have to go through a lot in order to want to come back in this league. Now, I don't know if they will, like I, I wouldn't yeah, show no, my I, again. Like, listen, I, I think, I think having, um, I think having like the, these sanctions and, and some of these w within them, some of these, these conditions, like, there has to be a certain um, amount of training that some of these that, that some of them have to go through if if they want to take a next step in, into NWSL. But you know, it, again, the 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 acknowledgement of of wrongdoing and accepting personal responsibility mm -hmm. for inappropriate conduct, like these are all, I think, very important things to have included um, within this because. Um, again, I think if that happens, I think for, for some of these folks, I mean, we've, we've heard, I mean, we talked about some of these names on here, like we're, you're mentioning, uh, you know, for, for coaches, you know, um, in the section for conditional future employment, you, you know, Lisa, how you bring up Amanda Cromwell or Sam Green or Alain Reese, like these are, uh, you know, these are former coaches and staff like that we throughout 2022 had, um, previously spoken about on, on the show because we saw uh, things coming out, you know, from the, that joint team investigation. And some of those mm -hmm. things were, were probably already communicated, um, right. You know, to these former pride uh, Orlando pride coaches. Um, and we saw a reaction and, and, and some sort of fallout around that. I mean, Amanda Cromwell going public and saying that she's going to seek legal counsel. And it's like, here it is yeah. like legal, you know, it is just kind of like, okay, mm -hmm. well, is there going to be that acknowledgement of wrongdoing? Is there going to be that acceptance of personal responsibility for and, and does it have conduct? to be? I think it's also like interesting. Does it have to be public, right? Does Amanda Cromwell, she went out with that statement, hey, I'm going to seek personal uh, lawyers to combat this. Does she have to put out a public statement on social media or wherever saying, hey, I admit to all of this? Like, probably not. It probably just has to be like behind closed doors. But I think that's something interesting as well. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, look, we have to get into the club's find portion of, of this a, a little bit more. Um, uh, listen, I don't know what what folks were anticipating when it came to these sanctions, um, but looking at some of these numbers attached to some of these clubs, you're like, wow, that Oof. is like a historically large fine for this league, right? So Chicago Red Stars with the largest of those at 1.5 million, Portland Thorns with a million, Racing Louisville, 200,000, North Carolina Courage, 100,000, O.L. Reign, 50,000, Gotham FC, previously Sky Blue at 50,000. Um, in addition to those fines, North Carolina and Louisville will be required to hire a sporting staff, coaches and general managers that will be completely different from the men's team. So automatically putting in an, uh, an additional um, sanction on them, making sure that the staff for their women's team is required to report directly to ownership. Um, and, and I think looking at the Chicago Red Stars and Portland Thorns, when we're looking at those really, really big numbers, it's interesting to sort of, again, look back at some of the news that you and I had to cover in 2022 and see that $1 million price tag yeah. on this sanction. Um, and knowing now that Marin Paulson's million dollar quote unquote donation uh, for a safety task force probably is, is tied to this $1 million for sure. fund. Yeah, so for sure. I mean, that drop. 
Yeah, very interesting to see that drop because uh, between the teams that were issued fines, there there were five of them, as Sandra just mentioned, Chicago, Portland, Louisville, North Carolina, O.L. Reen, um, and Gotham, six of them, excuse me. Uh, then North Carolina and Racing, they also have caveats in this. So that is eight of the 10 teams that were in the NWSL in 2021 um, and then moving backwards, right? But most recently, so you're some people are wondering, even people in our chat, hey, what about Washington? What about Chris Ward? Washington's Spirit and Kansas City Current were not fined because Washington Spirit ended up selling to their new owner in Michelle Kang. Um, and there was no evidence against Kansas City Current that they uh, retaliated against the players for raising concerns about the mistreatment. Uh, so that's why those two clubs are not fined. Um, but with all this money, right? Like we, we have this conversation vaguely in the league about, Hey, what are salary caps right now for the leagues? We don't know at this point, but like when you look at these fines, $1.5 million, $1 million, uh, 200,000, 100,000, $50,000. Where is this money going? What's happening with this? And, and per the league, um, the NWSL stated that these fines are going to be used to further the systemic reformation and to directly have positive impacts in the lives of the players, which um, is it, maybe it's going to cover some of the investigation costs. Maybe it's going to cover some costs of growing safety in the sport or growing positions in the league that provide safety and transparency, funding the salaries of some of those positions. Uh, so I thought that was an interesting point in the in the release that the league basically saying, Hey, what are we going to use all this money for? It's not just for us to grow and make the league better, but it's actually to give back to the players and to continue to protect them. The money's going to go in a cycle to hopefully continue to do good and protect these players moving forward. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's important to know because I think whenever we talked about, you know, what, what's, what is, are the next steps? What do those next steps mm -hmm. look like for this league moving forward? Um, it has it's it has to include that, and you know, Commissioner Berman has has been been pretty vocal um, about that in terms of ensuring that they continue to maintain great relationships with the players, the players' association, um, ensuring that there's still that player first, player led kind of initiatives that you know remain moving forward for you know for this league. It was good to see um, within this announcement. Um, you know, how they're going to continue to prioritize that, you know, for the players um, mm -hmm. and, you know, players association, executive director, Mega Burke saying that, you know, the, the true accountability is, is found in the actions that have been taken thus far. And just importantly, and the choices people in positions of power make moving forward. Now is the time to realize the transformation. Right. So yeah. um, it sort of feels like this is that, you know, sort of that that bookend to this very, very long kind of two years, um, you know, within the NWSL. And and we'll see now that these things are in place, now that you have policies in place, now that you have the procedures in place, you have to um, allow those things to to do their job, right? Allow those policies exist. And now those policies need time to, to, to do their job. So it was uh, certainly a big news drop in terms of, of the league. And we were happy uh, to cover that.